everyone welcome to pumpkin horror now today we're going to be touching base on all my Funko Pop figures that are based on horror okay I not Halloween I don't really have anything in Halloween but mostly horror I do have a huge collection of sci-fi like Power Rangers I got Jared from uh, Labyrinth as well as Smog a uh, bunch of Godzilla obviously because I'm a Godzilla fan but anyway we're going to touch base on the horror figures that I have and this one here, we're going to start off with this one. This is Stripe from Gremlins. I believe it's from the first movie. Uh, Stripe is from the first movie, and I believe that's what this character is. There is another one in the second movie. I can't remember his name. Uh, the name is, excuse me. He's the one that turns into the spider. can't remember. It's been a while since I've seen the movies. But anyway, we're going to touch base and show you what these guys look like, okay? So we're going to start off with the Gremlins figures. I got two of them. I got a Mogwai. As well as uh, the gremlin here, Stripe. Okay, these guys are vinyls. They are part of the Funko Pop family. They're just smaller than your traditional Funko Pops, I guess. I don't know why they do that, but they are definitely different than your traditional Funko Pops. All right. I also have an actual 1980s figure that first came out based on Stripe. Um, it's a little bit chewed up because it's old. Obviously, some kid played with it and stuff. I was at the Coliseum and I came across it for eight bucks. I said, "All right, I'll take it off your hands," and I still have that figure. They made a modern version of that particular figure. I haven't actually picked it up yet. I'm not sure if I will or not. But anyway, Stripe. Okay, that's what he looks like on top. All right. Feet are rather small. All right. Articulation-wise, there really isn't any articulation other than the fact that the head moves. And that's pretty much it in a nutshell. Alright, moving on. Put that down there. Okay, Mogwai. There you go. Again, articulation-wise, the head does move. Now you see, he's got a, a hole on the bottom of it, so you could actually use a NECA stand to actually put it on there, which was smart on them because the feet are obviously small, and they got big heads, so they have a tendency to topple over. So you could probably use a NECA stand just to uh, prop it in there. All right, now we are moving on to this guy right here. This is the Predator. He's cool looking. There's different Predators out there. But I got this when it first came out. Alright. Again, the head does move. Okay. The tentacles, which is treated like hair, is a very cool aspect about the predators. I forgot what they call them, tendrils or something. But as you can see, pretty cool looking all right moving on next one we're going to get into the little tiny figures that i have all right let me get the sign for that use your sign all right we're going to start off with chucky all right the arms do move on these here i forgot what they call them dorbs i think they call them funko pop dorbs these little tiny figures It's got the traditional colors in the uh, of the um, uniform, I guess, or the costume that he wears. And there is, in fact, a TV series based on Chucky right now. I think it's on a sci-fi channel. I don't have regular cable, so I'm not going to be able to watch it in that aspect. But I'm sure I'll be able to get a hold of it. Right, but that's Chucky. Now, it doesn't have any holes on the bottom of these because, obviously, they're smaller. I guess they're well-balanced. The head does move. Okay, sorry about that. Alright. Alright. Let's get into Annabelle. That is Annabelle. Now the head, on this one here, it does not move. Simply because of the way it's made. Or does it? No. Yeah, it does a little bit. 
but it doesn't have much movement, so I wouldn't recommend you moving it. Arms do move, they got articulation, okay? I'm sorry about the shadowing. Alright. And I'll show you the sign here in a second. That it comes with. I'd love to give me a full size um, Annabelle doll as well as a Chucky doll, but they're like $600 for those things, $300 to $600. And I'm not willing to pay that kind of price for them. So. Alright, now here's the sign for Annabelle. Sorry about the shadowing. I might have to change the lighting on that. Hang on. Alright, so let's try that out. Alright, let's try this again. That's a little better, but not much better. You see the miss me? Miss me. I know you miss me. Okay, that's the sign for it. Alright. You definitely don't want to lose that, so that's a small little piece. Now, let's get into this guy here. Mr. Freddy Krueger. Alright. Articulation wise, arms do not move, but the head does. So, Alright. Basically, the only articulation that it has. The fedora, okay. The Christmas sweater. All right. Now, when it comes to Freddy Krueger, he's probably not my least favorite, but damn near close to it. Uh, I prefer Jason, uh, Pinhead, as well as Michael Myers, and Chucky over this guy here for some reason. Those movies, they were good, they were comical, and a lot of people criticize the 2010 movie. And it's just like Rob Zombie's movies. They want to criticize them too. Which makes no sense because they were actually pretty decent movies in my opinion. But that's just me. I like the dark tones of the 2010 movie. Uh, especially Jackie Earl Haley. He's a great actor. Uh, all the way back to the Bad News Bears. Uh, but anyway, he actually plays Freddy Krueger in that movie. And I like the dark tones of that movie. It's just me. Same with Rob Zombie. Even though he was really vicious and evil. But he was huge. There was just some elements that people don't like that I do like about those movies. I definitely want to get a hold of a um, Rob Zombie version of the uh, Michael Myers masks. But they're hard to find. Especially a decent one for a decent price. Right now they're just way up there in price. Anyway, Freddy Krueger. Alright. This guy right here is in fact my all time favorite horror character. It is Mr. Pinhead. Alright. Now the masks they got out there based on Pinhead? No. I don't like the looks of them. There isn't one single decent one out there. But that's kind of hard to do. When technically it's an actual face uh, makeup type uh, applications and stuff. So making the masks they're always going to look odd. Okay so that's why I don't even bother picking those up. Anyway. That's Pinhead. Now it's a little known fact in the Hellbound Heart. That the figure... That's in the, um, the book itself, articulation-wise. does not have a name. Uh, the name Pinhead was actually given to him by the fans, obviously because of the pins on his face and stuff, and they just simply called it, and it stuck. So that's why they call him Pinhead. There is, in fact, a new movie supposedly coming out. It's been greenlit. I'm not sure how they're going to treat it. I personally would like to see them do a female version of Pinhead. Especially a real sexy one. That would be awesome. And give it some serious dark tones like they did in the original. That was cool the way they handled that. But then, I think part three, on up, it just got stupid after a while. No offense, but you know the, the franchise in itself was not taken seriously. Okay, but anyway, they are, in fact, coming out with a new movie. Clive Barker does own the American rights to um, Pinhead now, or the Hellraiser uh, franchise now. So we'll see what happens in the future when it comes to the uh, Hellraiser. There's also Tortured Souls. Those are another cool set of figures. They come from a different realm or dimension uh, based on the Cenobites and 
their primordial uh, situation. Uh, obviously, uh, for uh, Pinhead and the rest of the gang, they're in the labyrinth in a different realm altogether. But it's pretty much the same, except they're in a different realm. Tortured souls, I would love to actually see them um, do um, a movie based on that. But they have to sink a lot of money into the... Uh, the props and stuff like that, and the way they handle the storyline, everything's got to be perfect. Because it would be perfect if they handled it right. Jason Voorhees. Okay? He's like, ding, 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 ding. No, it's okay. Shit, shit. Ah, ah, ah. I actually got a screamer that does just what I just said. Alright? He's a tiny little guy. He's got a big old head. Okay, head does move, and that's the only thing that really moves on this figure here. Alright. Alright. Put him there. Let's get into Pinhead. I mean, Pinhead. Let's get into Pennywise. I got a couple of these figures from the 2017 movie. Alright. got a big head. These are hard to stand if you don't put them on solid um, like a shelf and if you walk by they'll vibrate and fall over because they're top heavy. All right. It has a little hole in it in case you need to put a stand in it. All right. Articulation wise the head is hard to move because the actual balloon is actually glued to its head so I wouldn't twist it. Wouldn't recommend it. All right. All right. Get him out of the way. Let's get into the other pinhead. Crab pinhead. Okay. Articulation wise. The arms move very ever so slightly. But like, I wouldn't recommend trying to move them all together because you end up breaking them. The head does move but like I said the arms get in the way. And that's what he looks like. He's all spiked out. I like the hairstyle on this one. Alright. Again, these are hard figures to stand. Because of their big heads. Now this one, for some strange reason, don't have the hole in it. Alright, that's weird. But anyway. Moving on. Let's get into this guy here. Michael Myers, okay, 1978, okay, well, that's what I think this is based off of, all right, now the new one is coming out in 2000, well, well it was supposed to be 2018, but it's coming out this year, Halloween Kills, the trailers on it are really kick-ass, and obviously, Michael's pissed off because they tried to burn his ass and he survived it. Some people would stand there and say he's superficial or supernatural. I don't believe that for a second. He's just a man on a mission that kills people and that's pretty much it in a nutshell. And the way that he survives the, uh, the uh, fire, I don't think he was seriously burned because you see it on the mask that he wasn't really seriously burned. But he does survive it because obviously he's got a high tolerance for pain. Uh, but I don't think he's supernatural. Now, Jason, on the other hand, for what he went through, he's supernatural. Technically, yes. He went to hell the whole nine yards. Michael hasn't gone through any of that stuff. He's just pretty much uh, hell-bent on killing people, and that's what he does, too. He's a cool character. Now, let me tell you, the movies in themselves, the storylines, the way they handle them, for me personally, they are better than Friday the 13th. They're not as comical, in a sense. they got a more serious tone to them in the way they handle the storylines. I do like their movies, okay? I think they're fantastic. Some of them are hit and miss. But the majority of the Michael Myers movies are fantastic, including the season of The Witch. A lot of people don't like that movie as well, simply because uh, they say, well, it doesn't have Michael Myers in it, but it does. It has a little tiny cameo as you... See, I think it's closer to like three quarters through the movie. They walk by this TV set and you see Michael Myers on the TV set. That's the only cameo you see of Michael in the movie. That movie in itself is based off of three antagonists. 
the uh, pumpkin, the witch, and the skull. Uh, they're actual masks that are controlled by people, and they make people do crazy things, you know, stupid stuff like that. But anyway, I do like that movie. It's different. When I first seen it, I thought it was a really good movie, but a lot of people don't like the movie, simply because it doesn't have Michael Myers in it. But anyway, all right, articulation-wise, the head does move, and that's pretty much it in a nutshell on that. The knife is full of blood, okay? All right. Now, let's get into my xenomorphs. I got two of them, okay? And he's got the little secondary mouth. <laughs> but anyway, the articulation on this, the head does move. It's a big head, too, okay? Arms, I don't think they move. No, they're, they're solid. But anyway, that's what she looks like. The tail has that little spike, very Giger like. The whole biomechanical suit, the way they uh, took the idea from Giger's artwork and made the suit, I thought that was absolutely cool. Uh, as time progressed in the movies, obviously they got away from all that. And they're more smooth line, especially the latest one, Alien Covenant. Um, and that one, he's, I guess he's kind of like uh, first technical alien. Or you know what I mean. But anyway, he was kind of smooth. He didn't have the biomechanical uh, suit on him. But anyway, this is a alien warrior. It's probably from the first movie. It's probably a big chap. Who knows what it is. But anyway, that's what that is. Alright, this guy here is the queen. And she is big. Okay. She's got a big old mouth. Articulation wise... As you can see, the head does move a little bit. I don't recommend you trying to twist it because, yeah, you can move it, see? Okay, there you go. I just haven't moved it in a while. All right. And so put that up there. Uh, uh, there we go. There it is, guys. Hang on. Straighten out her head. There it is. Let's turn it. Mm -hmm. Uh, that is um, um, Queen, the Alien Queen. Oh my God, <laughs> I just had a brain fart. I'm sorry about that, guys. Anyway, the Alien Queen. There's different variations of the Queen as well as the. I think they're called the Mother. The Mother is even bigger than the Queen. She is the most powerful entity within the Xenomorph lineup, um, and she's red, I believe, and. She's absolutely massive compared to a queen. But anyway, uh, there's some really cool incarnations based on the Xenomorphs. They touch base on everything. I've got a huge collection of NECA figures that are based on the Xenomorphs because the Alien franchise, as compared to um, Predator, obviously it is my favorite franchise when it comes to the two. Don't get me wrong, Predator uh, franchise in itself is absolutely fantastic. The many different variations that they have based on the uh, Predator, very cool. You can collect them all day long and that gets it to be an expensive habit because they are a little bit more pricier than your common Xenomorph uh, type uh, figures and stuff because there's a lot of the figures based on uh, Xenomorphs out there, but they're not as popular as the Predators in some aspects, okay? So that's why they're a little bit cheaper, so I don't mind collecting them for that reason. But the Predators, I got like eight of them. We'll eventually get into those, and I'll show you what those look like. Um, but I think I got like eight of them. I don't have a huge collection. The Xenomorphs, I think I got like 20 of them, okay? <laughs> because I like the Xenomorphs, okay? Alright, but that's the Queen, okay? The Alien Queen. And she is absolutely huge in the first, mo uh, second movie, not the first movie, where she fights uh, Ripley in that construction thing. But anyway, it's a good fight. And obviously the one that's in Alien vs. Predator is a different type of uh, queen. She's a lot bigger than your standard queen. I forgot what they did to her, but anyway, she was extremely powerful. Now, that was a good movie. A lot of people didn't like the AVP. Again, you got your certain fans that want to stick within the original franchise. 
And anytime you do something a little bit different, people don't like it. It is what it is. We're all like that, okay? But anyway, this is my queen, okay? Now, I wanted to get the actual NECA version of this. And honestly, NECA, it's, they were charging like $150 for it at the time. And I was like, oh, I can't pay that kind of money for that. She's very teethy. She's also got a secondary mouth, but you can't see it in this one because that's not the way this thing is made. Look at the head on this thing. The crown. Or the crest. Alright. Very cool. We're almost finished here, guys, so just bear with me on this, okay? Alright. Now, the last time I made a video, it was extremely long, and it didn't fare well on YouTube. It seems that when you upload them, um, especially if you're doing high definition, it sometimes doesn't want to process. Frankenstein. Just kidding. It's actually Herman Munster. Okay. I do have a Ruby's version of Herman Munster. I'm not super impressed with it, but when you look at it, you say to yourself, yeah, it's Herman. Okay. When I first got that mask, the actual left eye was not colored in. A defect when it comes to mask companies, they don't, you know, when they mass produce things, Sometimes they come in defective. That wasn't a major defect, so I just kind of colored the pupils in, and we were good to go, okay? But anyway, this is Herman Munster, okay? Articulation-wise, same thing, okay? All right. And that's what she looks like. All right, moving on. We're going to get into Valak, or Valak, or Valak, okay? This is a very cool horror character. It is based off of a male demon that, that actually ran uh, a realm down in hell. He was actually the head of most of the demons down there. Well, anyway, he managed to escape, and he took possession of a nun. And she's all through the Conjuring series. I believe she's also in Annabelle in some aspects, as well as... What's, there's another movie. It's part of the Conjuring universe, but anyway, she's all through it. They are in the process of doing yet another movie, not based on the 2018 one, but there is a new one coming out based on Valak again. I like to call her Valak. But anyway, um, she's all through the Conjuring universe. Very popular character, okay? Now, I do have a NECA figure based on her, but it's one of the, I don't know, different. They're not like the full figures that you would normally get. She's different. She's almost like a doll because they got her in a gown, her nun outfit and everything. And the legs and everything are just a little bit different, okay? But it's cool. But unfortunately, with that particular figure in itself, I end up uh, paying 60 bucks for it when I could have gone to um, a Target and it was there and picked it up for like 30 bucks. But I went back the next day and it was gone and I couldn't find it for like three months. So I was forced to uh, pay 60 bucks for it. Pissed me off. But anyway, Valak, okay? You notice on the nose here, it kind of looks like a little cross a little bit, but it's not. All right. There is a different Funko Pop version of this. And I think it's where her mouth is wide open and nice and teethy. I'm not sure. But it's been a while. But anyway, she's cool. Okay. Okay, now let's get into the last three. And then we'll end this video. Now, I'm not familiar with the names of these guys because I haven't seen the movie since the 80s. Well, actually, I stand corrected. I actually watched it about a year ago. But anyway, the Killer Clowns are very cool looking. Now, I will tell you this. I just watched Hauntformer, who is totally obsessed with Halloween, and that's a good thing. Sorry about the camera. Uh, he ended up going to the main uh, store in New Jersey based on Spirit Halloween, and they have a decent collection now based on the Killer Clowns. Okay, they got masks and everything. They actually have, Trick or Treat Studios has masks based on these guys. And they're like $70 to almost $100 a pop. Because they're absolutely massive looking. And I'm thinking about uh, picking them up, but further down the line. Alright, well, I'm not sure what his name is. I can't remember. I apologize about that. But anyway, he is very cool looking. He's got the little rabbit. Okay. Alright. Anyway, these guys are cool. I ended up buying them on Amazon a long time ago. This one I do know. Shorty. Okay. It's got very cool colors. Now, when it comes to clowns, I love the masks. I've got three of them right now, and I've got three, three or four lined up on Amazon. 
to purchase later on once I be able to do so. But I do have them lined up. I will have a certain collection of clown masks now. A lot of people get freaked out by clowns. Not me. I think they're fucking cool. All right. And that's why this video is not for children. Because we cuss. All right. Sorry about the camera again. Last but not least, this guy. All right. Show you the back of the head. Top of the head. The whole body. Now articulation wise, nothing. It's just one solid piece, guys. He's got the hammer. It's hammer time. But anyway, that's it on my collections. Uh, based on horror. And I'll put this up here. Alright. And this one here. And now we have ourselves some killer clowns. Okay, guys? That's it on my horror collection uh, when it comes to Funko Pops. Like I said, I do have a huge amount of uh, sci-fi type. A bunch of Godzilla and King Kong, okay? Because I'm a big Godzilla and King Kong fan. Anything kaiju related or giant monster related, I'm a fan, okay? But I've been collecting those particular figures based on Godzilla and Kong for about 40 years now. So I got a huge collection of those. You won't see them on this channel, unfortunately, because I don't feel they're Halloween or horror related. So, anyway, just letting you know I do have them. This is it on this particular video. Hope you guys enjoyed this. Uh, don't forget to like and subscribe and hit that notification bell because I'm going to be pushing out some more videos. This, my friends, is Pumpkin Horror. You guys have yourselves a good day.